and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. And this is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader market. So a bit dicey last week, a lot of things that we are going to be covering here as we move through today's show. Of course, critical areas of support, resistance with these broader markets, a bit of a a cloud, if I may, has descended so uh, over the markets. So let's not waste a minute. Take a look at what we are going to be covering here today. As usual, again, we're going to take a look at those markets. Where did we close the week? And always with an eye toward what we can anticipate going forward from there. Some of those top headline news that had the markets uh, kind of jumping around a bit. And uh, there was a lack of economic data. So hence, Fed comments came in and had a super strong impact and other items as well. We're going to take a look at where the strength took shape this week. Does it look poised to take shape longer? And also, of course, you want to be aware of that weakness and what drove that weakness. Again, all with an eye toward formulating a bit of a longer term outlook. It's been tough this year. Certainly, we had a great January and February. We are uh, stumbling a bit. So we're just going to take a look at where we are seeing the potential beginning stages of rotation and of course, why. So let's take a look at some of these headline news again that pushed the markets around a bit. In the beginning of last week, we did see consumer credit drop and it dropped to a level that was Uh, evident about two years ago. So that's a pretty significant drop. Retailers, I will say they did have a very tough period this week, and we're going to get into that more as we move forward here. Federal Reserve comments did move the markets, and Fed Chair Powell, of course, being front and center, his initial, he was the initial Fed official to speak, and he reiterated the comment that the deflationary period has begun. So that was quite a boost. Beyond that, however, several Federal Reserve presidents were not quite as generous in their comments, and they did talk about the need for elevated interest rates beyond this year. So that got a lot of people a bit jittery, and we did see a move away from certain areas that had been working. So as such, we did see riskier areas of the market pull back among those mixed Fed comments, and then economic data as well. So we did see weekly unemployment climb. However, consumer sentiment, it did hit a 13-month high. Inflation is still a concern among consumers, but mixed as it relates to consumer credit relative to sentiment. So that kind of uncertainty is not what the markets like. We like to have firmer footing be uh, underneath our feet as we put our money to work. Next week, pretty critical. On the 14th, we are going to see that core CPI number released. Of course, a very important inflation data point for the Federal Reserve. We're also going to get January retail sales numbers that are going to be closely watched. And then producer price index data later in the week. So stay tuned to your news feed. All of this information is going to be pretty critical for the markets. So let's go ahead and take a look at where we closed for the week. And what we are viewing here is a daily price chart of the S&P 500 index. And what we can see here is that high in price in the S&P 500 that was reached the prior week and subsequent pullback. And certainly this week, the S&P was down a little more than 1% for the week. I'm highlighting this high volume to the upside because generally that does signal accumulation. It's what you want to see, higher volume on your rally days. And then this week, we did see a bit of a continuation with those pullback days, having a little bit less volume, but not so much on Thursday. We were creeping up there on that volume. One critical level that a lot of certainly technicians are paying very close attention to with the S&P is that 4,100 level. That is an area that when we surpassed it, I know from my work, I turned 
more constructive on the prospects for the market. However, we did break below that 4,100 yesterday and today just into the close. We weren't quite able to recapture. We did close at 4090, so not what you want to see. Some other metrics you can use relative to support and resistance is the next area of support for the S&P 500 is this 21-day simple moving average at 4050, and then from there, your 50 day. So on the upside, this 10 day now becomes upside resistance. Actually, that 4,100 is your first area of pretty strong resistance. And then that 10 day is right above that at 4,109. So we're in a pretty tricky period here relative to the market. So let's take a look at those momentum indicators. RSI is above 50 and the stochastics are also above 50. So we can see just going back historically, you will want to use history as your guide as it relates to potential downfalls in the markets should we see further deterioration. And this is something that I will cover in great detail, but in very succinct detail in my MEM Edge report, twice weekly report that will come out on Sunday. I have not really had it of time to dig in beyond what I am sharing with you now, but I will get more into some of the other critical drivers and what to be on the lookout for there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the NASDAQ. And that is certainly a key uh, index here in the markets of late. It had been behaving quite a bit stronger than the S&P 500 as we saw a move in to growth stocks into certainly January. We can see this nice downtrend reversal. And today, I'm sorry, this week, we did falter more than double the S&P. It was NASDAQ was down 2.5%. We did break below this 10-day moving average, this green line. And that was really pretty critical as it relates to support for the NASDAQ. And we can see that we did close today in the upper reaches of the trading range for the day. That is good news. However, let's take a look at these momentum indicators that RSI is up here in positive territory, but it is heading south. So we are unfortunately seemingly getting a little bit closer to that net neutral there. Stochastics also heading downward. We can see we've had these other uh, downward trends that have been able to reverse, but we will want to pay attention to the stochastics here at this 50. This is a faster moving momentum indicator, but really quite helpful as it relates to indicating the possible forward move of these given indexes. And so from here, let's go ahead and take a look at the underlying sectors in the S&P 500. These are the 11 S&P 500 sectors. I've gone ahead and added an RSI indicator, listed them in descending order. And we are looking at a two-month daily price chart view. So what we are on the lookout for is potential Rotation up here in the forefront here are your stronger areas relative to their peers. And then down here in the lower right are your generally weaker areas. So we're on the move for groups that could potentially be coming out of this weaker area to the forefront and likewise from this stronger area and then trending downward. So at this point in time, we do still have two of those three primary growth areas up here at the forefront, and that is technology and consumer discretionary. Con uh, communication services really struggled this week, down 5.5%. We'll get into what drove that particular group lower, but it had been up here in the forefront with these other growth areas. Also up here are financials, and it's been a little wobbly among financials. Bank stocks, we're going to get in and take a look at that area. Uh, but there are some kind of obscure or really, I'm going to say, maybe not so closely followed areas within financials that are supporting this uptrend. Let's just take a quick look here. It did pull back with the markets, but certainly held up relatively strong if we compare that to the NASDAQ and the S&P. And it's all about investment management firms and insurance. It's not your, uh, there are several mega cap bank names that are holding in, but by and large, 
those other areas are also supporting this nice uptrend here in the financials. Let's take a quick look at this technology group. It was down less than the broader markets and less than the NASDAQ. And we can see that it broke below this 10-day moving average, but was able to find support. And that is very good news. I will share with you two of the major components of the tech industry. And then in this next segment today, we'll get into other sub-industry groups that are behaving fairly well within this technology area, despite the fact we have seen a move uh, away from these growth areas. So let's go ahead and move on. I'm going to share with you a view of the top performing and by a very wide margin. This is XLE, that energy sector up 5%. And every other uh, sector within the S&P 500 was down either a little bit or down five and a half percent on uh, XLC, but energy you can see has had a really significant move back into an uptrend. So we'll take a look at where that strength may be emanating from. Certainly earnings is a key driver, but there are other metrics to pay attention to when uh, watching and closely looking at the energy group. And from here, we talked about some of these weaker areas down here. And again, this week, healthcare, staples, and utility stocks are still down here in this lower quartile. These are those more defensive areas. However, I want to see if I can quickly share this with you. Let's take a look at today and that sector performance from this initial page interface here and take a look. Utilities, Healthcare and staples up quite a bit more than the broader markets. And we did see this in the beginning of last week as well. So I am mean, keeping an eye. There are only a couple of names in each of these groups, but we are seeing those big cap pharmas, a little bit of bottom fishing taking shape there. And then staples on some earnings are starting to pick up as well. So stay tuned. We're going to keep a, uh, over the coming weeks, keep an eye out for, uh, ideally, certainly from my work, I don't particularly want those defensive areas to come back. I prefer to see growth leading us out of this bear market, but certainly worth noting. So from here, we are going to take a look at some other underlying areas that are really critical to the market. And for my work, I use specific ETFs. We'll get into that again, a two month daily price chart view, and that RSI telling us where these stronger areas are. And this is very, very significant. The two areas up here in the forefront are the yield on the 10-year, which has been increasing, and then also the US dollar. And both of these metrics are very, very impactful to the market. So let's begin by taking a look at that yield on the 10-year treasury. And you can see it's had a pretty significant move higher. And this is not what you would anticipate, certainly with thoughts that the Federal Reserve may lighten or certainly put the brakes on their rate, rate hike program later in the year. That's what drove the interest rates down in, during this period. However, more recently, this is that uncertainty, and it's centered around certainly, among other things, comments from those Federal Reserve officials. So super, super impactful in the markets with interest rates. There are several areas. Uh, energy fares well in a rising interest rate area. Growth stocks fare poorly in a rising interest rate area. So you can see the impact there. From here, we can take a quick look at the US dollar because it had been deteriorating since October. And generally, we are now in a rising dollar environment. And this is going to impact commodities. It's also going to impact those multinational companies. If we do see a spike in the dollar, it will impact uh, their certainly uh, profits. So that is two areas that are up here in the forefront and highly impactful. Good news, semiconductors still up here exhibiting strength. We did see a pullback today. However, buyers came in on that pullback. So keeping a close eye on SOXX, we can look at SMH. That's another metric and a way to keep your eye on these semiconductors and very similar dynamic. This is of note. Take a look at that MACD 
I'm keeping a super close eye on that because we do have several top performing semiconductor stocks on the suggested holdings list for my MEM Edge report. So let's move forward, take a look at another area of technology. This is the IGV software index, and it was certainly down less than the NASDAQ. And we can see that it did break below that 10-day moving average very similar to the mark, broader markets, buyers coming in on the dip. So again, keeping an eye out on these momentum metrics if you are involved in the uh, software group. It's quite a bit bigger than semiconductors. There are over 350 stocks in this area, but uh, later in this show, I'll share with you a thematic area of strength within software. So let's go ahead down. We do want to take a look. I mentioned to you that retailers, this is XRT, the S&P 500 retail ETF, down 6.5% this week. Now, of note is the really explosive move that it had into this new year period from this 40, actually, uh, yeah, 46 level up to 76. So any kind of pullback certainly would be anticipated. You can see XRT did get into that overbought position up there above 70. Uh, and now we do have that MACD crossover. So we'll see if it finds support here at that 21 day moving average. That's another area that has really select pockets that of uh, uh, names and groups within retail that are working versus those that are not. We do want to keep an eye on volatility. This is that VIX index, and it is also known as the fear index. We can see that we did break up above that 50 day today on today's pullback. However, we closed the week below this 50 day moving average. So keeping a close eye because that 20.5 on the VIX is a bit more elevated than that 18 level, which is the hallmark. Any VIX below that is going to imply further upside for the markets. Here we can see the volatility declining, certainly into the new year as the broader markets rallied. So a increased VIX or volatility index is not good for the market. So I'll be certainly keeping a very close eye on that. Over here, we have that biotech IBB, and you can see that it pulled back. It was down again this week, 3.1%, and this is pretty indicative of a risk off sentiment among investors because again that uncertainty that creeping rising interest rate environment i don't see it here so i will pull it up another risk on area that pulled back quite a bit this week is small cap stocks this is the russell 2000 index you can see this sharp pullback did close the week above that 21 and we can see that that rsi is still in positive territory but again small caps are riskier in nature and ideally in order to see an extended rally you do want to see small all cap stocks participating. Another area that we can take a quick look at is gold. We talked about that US dollar on the rise. Oftentimes you will see commodities such as gold deteriorate. And that's exactly what we are seeing with that gold. Uh, GLD is that S&P 500 gold ETF. One last area I'm going to share with you. We talked about energy being a top performer. And you can see this week, we did see an uptick here in the price of oil. We're back at that 84 level. So not quite as elevated as we've been in the past, but certainly worth noting. So from here, I'm going to share one other view for you with the broader markets that is really uh, quite helpful. This is a colorized view of the weekly performance of the S&P 500, and you can view by cluster energy up here in the forefront and those areas that were down the most. And we can see some of these transportation areas that had been doing uh, quite well. I'm not going to hover over it. It gets a bit confusing, but... Uh, this is super helpful for a very quick view of what took place last week. Consumer defensive, you can see on the upper right-hand corner, those areas that are on the move. I talked about that area picking up a bit. So from here, let's take a look. I did not talk about the Dow, but what we can do from here is go ahead and take a quick look at that Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, I did share with you the S&P and the NASDAQ, so if you can... Uh, think back and you'll recall that they did pull back and break below key support. Uh, the 
Dow Jones Industrial Average was flat for the week, while the broader S&P and the growth-oriented NASDAQ were down. So a bit of waffling here, but I did want to go ahead from here and share with you a view. And this is something you can do on stock charts very, very easily. Quite simply, if you were to add the components of the 30 stocks that are in that index, you can then sort it really in any given way. You can also view it in any different way, uh, many different ways as a summary, uh, performance options, and so forth. So quite simply, again, that two-month daily price chart view with that RSI. And what I'm doing here is quite simply highlighting those outperformers within the Dow that are really helping to support it. Uh, it did not have a strong period similar to the uh, NASDAQ and the S&P in January, but there is strength that is really helping this index remain elevated. First up here is American Express AXP came out with strong numbers, had that gap up into a very nice continuation rally. That certainly is the strongest name up here. The Dow is a uh, Dow Holdings, DOW, also on earnings. And then we can see this nice continuation in the uptrend as it's consolidating after that pretty big move here. Let's take a look at Apple. This is one of those major components in technology. It was down 1.4%. However, it had gotten into an overbought position. This is on my watch list. Uh, I was not going to be a buyer during an overbought position in Apple. We need only go back to this rally period July into September after they reported earnings here and note that that overbought on that RSI is not a good time to be entering Apple, but we did pull back, find support here at that 10-day simple moving average. And of course, it's a big holding among the Dow industrials. Microsoft is another big heavyweight in the technology sector. So it's Apple and Microsoft comprise about 40% of that sector. And we can see it had charged to a new near-term high. This is Microsoft pulled back and really never got back to that 10-day simple moving average. So those two certainly are the stronger among those mega cap FANG stocks. And then as we move down, we can see Disney had some pretty strong news by way of earnings. And then as far as reorganization uh, with their new CEO or the old CEO coming back. So initially we did see a nice rally to a new near-term high, all poised for a breakout, but we have seen a subsequent pullback. And take a look, you really only need to look at the RSI here. Disney rallying into that good news. And now we are pulling back. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, but on the lookout for support there at that 21 day. Simple moving average. Walmart on the move this week. We can see it has a nice double bottom formation. This is on my watch list as well. I want to get that MACD up into positive territory to give a sense that we could see a nice continuation there I uh, rally. And we did see, I talked about that move into um, pharmaceuticals. This is Merck reversing its downtrend here. Uh, all these guys are on my watch list. So you will want to stay on top of them. I mentioned mega cap bank stocks holding in well, JP Morgan, JPM. So really the Dow Jones Industrial Index used to be an index, of course, primarily of industrial names, but it certainly has evolved over the last 10 years as they've removed some names and added others. Here's Goldman Sachs daily price chart, also holding up remarkably well, up above that 10-day simple moving average, positive momentum indicators. So from here, I did not intend to go through each name, but as I go through, I see something of note because Salesforce is a big heavyweight in the software space, had a nice downtrend reversal, but it did get overbought. We did see a sharp pullback today, buyers coming in on that pullback. So this is on my uh, refined watch list as well, because I view it as quite a bellwether name among software. Last up, I, I keep saying last up, but UNH worth noting, because this is a name that sold off pretty fiercely on earnings, and it is trying to reverse its downtrend. We're seeing other names 
in this healthcare insurance space that really sold off quite sharply and are in the throes of attempting to reverse their downtrends. A little too early at this point for that. So from here, I did want to go ahead and share with you some other areas that are uh, picking up. We're going to take a quick look here at stocks that are hitting new highs in this market. And there is a reason for that because there is a theme as it relates to names that are retaining and hitting new highs. So right first up here is ETN, uh, Eaton, and we can see we had this nice base breakout to a nice continuation rally, your momentum in positive territory. This is going to be all about earnings. Uh, Parker Hannafin, another name, gap up on earnings into a continuation rally. And as many of you may know, these are industrial stocks. We can take a look at IR, Ingersoll Rand, pulling back from that near-term high, but ideally you can see a theme here. Here is a name that subscribers to my MEM Edge report will be very familiar with. We've been able to take advantage of this nice trend here on Transdime TDG. They provide products to the aerospace industry. So again, of note is that this new high list is populated by these industrials. HEI, Heiko is another uh, parts provider to the aerospace industry. And another area that we can take a look at that is seeing a new high after this week's price action. No big surprise here. This is Exxon. And really, you can go through some of these bigger areas within energy, and you will see some of them hitting a new high. Uh, at Noble, this is a driller that is exhibiting a nice base breakout. Uh, Exxon, of course, in e and EMP, exploration and production. I do need to sign out from here. Have a great weekend, you guys, and use that link below. You can trial my MEM Edge report for two, four weeks for a very nominal fee. So I urge you to do that. Lots more I didn't get to today, and I will be covering in my report on Sunday. Take care. See you here next Friday. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.